just let you know. Got it. Um, as I said, you know, it's really, um, hair is really is important part of our, our body, especially for women. And I think it's um, fitting for Black History Month for us to just discuss it, look at the history of hair, look at the texture of our hair. And um, we have two speakers here. We have uh, Mr. Page and Mr. Um, Clementine, who will be, um, <laughs> will be discussing um, our hair and, and um, you know, our hair is our crown and we need to look after our crown. And um, so at this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Page if he could introduce himself briefly. I know you've got lots of credibilities and, and titles, uh, very briefly, sir. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for that, Sharon. And I, I'm pleased to be here with uh, Brother Derek Clement and Rudy Page. Right. So, yes, I'm Rudy Page. And 40 years ago, uh, 40 years ago this this year actually I joined Dyke and Dryden as a sales as a sales rep representative traveling all around the country and then within a couple of years I was made the sales and marketing manager sent to Atlanta came back from Atlanta and uh, was able to visualize afro hair and beauty so I coined those three words afro hair and beauty set, set the framework for the what was a the exhibition for many years afro hair and beauty and um and i spent a lot of time establishing brands selling putting on hair fashion shows and and um and seminars so i've always been uh, education led as well as sales and marketing is important but education respect for the consumer and for the community as well both in the business as well as the next generation that were needed to be trained as well. So I'll, I'll stop there and hand over to Derek. You're still on mute. Is that better? That's better. Yes. Right, if I may add to that wonderful uh, verse just now, Sharon, about uh, a biblical verse. I am, I'm, I'm, I, I love the verse in Revelation 1, I think, verses 2, that goes like this. Um, I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And that resonates with me in many, many levels. Um, but anyway, before I start, I, I, I go deep into it. Let me see, I started hairdressing in 1976. I was trained by the legendary Winston Isaacs in Mayfair, London, uh, at the infamous Splinter's Hair Salon. And we provided the black excellence at its highest level. We provided the best work you could ever have for uh, the well-being and, and caretaking. In fact, the, the salon logo was hair caretakers. And that's a massive mantra, simply because that's what we did. Uh, we cared for the hair at all levels. And uh, that said, I think it's, I've done this over 45 years, and I went into do another 20 years. So I've been doing this for a very long time. I am absolutely pumped up, and I'm passionate about Afro hair. It's wonderful legacy, it's wonderful heritage, it's wonderful history. Mm. So, um... You um, written a book. Could you give us a brief summary of why you written a book, um, Derek? Well, so for writing a book. Yeah, gosh, so I mean, as I said, I started hairdressing in 1976, and I think um, I was very lucky to have uh, been in, in the in the tutelage of Winston Isaacs. Um, not not just Winston Isaacs, but there were um, other reputable hairdressers like um, uh, Art Dyson and uh, very famous hairdressers from the United States. And so they worked with Winston. Um, uh, 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 Walter Fontaine, another brilliant hairdresser. And those were iconic stylists on the planet at the time. Um, so 
as a young black man in those days, a young black boy, teenager, um, looking for someone to go, something to do and someone to show me, uh, I stumbled upon Splinter's hairdressers. And what I learned there, Chad, what I learned in that salon I mean, to me is, is priceless. Uh, it wasn't just a salon for young people. I mean, it, it changed your character, it sort of embellished your, it sharpened your skills. Uh, you learned good manners, moral values. But, but fundamentally what was important for me was being in a place that I didn't think existed. Um, in the heart and height of racism, there existed a, a beautifully and well-oiled black business operating at the highest level, catering for uh, the great and the good, uh, the plumber, the politician, uh, sportsmen of the highest caliber. You think of all the American singers and song stresses of the day, they all came there. Um, I can mention, I could mention so many names who went there. So uh, for me, therefore, having been exposed to that kind of environment, my raison d'etre therefore was to ensure that I, I, I chronicle that era. So from so so the book really gives you uh, an indelible in, in insight into what happened between 1976 right up to 19, 1985. That where my career ended at Splinters and I began my own my own journey as Derek Clement, Derek Clement Hair Salon. Okay, so um, in terms of businesses, so how many um, um, hairdressers or saloon have you um, managed at your career? Right, so I mean, I haven't, as I said, I haven't been given this the privilege of, of working in one of the best salons in the world. It just was natural, natural progression to own my own salon. So in 19, around about 1980s, I joined, I collaborated with a salon in Mayfair called Jade's. And after that, I opened up my own shop in, in Lewisham, in, in Lewisham called Noir. A year later, I opened the Derek Clement shop in Maynavale. A year after that, I opened a shop in Shepherd's Bush, uh, Gold Hawk Road called Ask Clement. And another year after that, I opened another salon in a uh, Gold Hawk Road. Uh, three years later, I felt the need to share my skills with, uh, to my people back in the Caribbean. I opened a salon and a school in Grenada, less, less in the Caribbean, yes. giving, providing classes for hairdressers in Trinidad, Barbados, Jamaica, Antigua, and throughout, throughout the, uh, the islands. Okay. Um, so another question I'd like to ask, um, a lot of people are um, probably wearing their natural hair at the moment. And do you feel that people should, um, what's it called again? You know, people are like, also they're looking like European in terms of wearing all these, these wigs. What are your thoughts about women being natural and women who are enhancing their beauty with um, these wigs? Let me first say that we are about empowerment and education. Um, we celebrate all aspects of Afro hair. In our company, we talk about Afro hair. There are nine principles of Afro hair. So Afro hair is such a wonderful medium. It can be morphed into nine different genres of styles. So I have, we have no, um, as Brother Rudy always says, we don't know, we, we don't know a woman's journey. And so, she has therefore the option to wear any styles in that nine principles. If she so wishes to wear a wig or a weave, uh, we support that. And, um, and the reason why we'd support that, it was her ancestors in the first place who created the weaves. So when a woman wear weave, she isn't trying to emulate anybody else. She's not trying to be anything else that she's not. She's simply looking for options. And invariably weaves and wigs are worn because um, you know, it's, it's quite likely that most of these women may suffer some kind of trauma. It could be traction alopecia. It could be um, um, uh, alopecia based on perhaps uh, some reaction to lupus or inflammation. So we, we, we support the weave. What we would like to see though, like our ancestors did in the past, we'd like to see our black women and uh, within the industry, we'd like to see our own hair type being used uh, to make weaves as opposed to using other people's hair type and other people's hair texture. Um, and I think I understand the reason for that because obviously there are hair types, uh, there's a standard template for hair types 
And I have a massive beef with that. Because in the template for hair types, straight hair becomes the number one uh, kind of uh, benchmark from which we have to um, sort of work down the line. I like to switch it around and say that the coily, kinky hair is the benchmark of all hair types. So we celebrate Afro hair in all its, in all its myriad forms, whether it's a lock, a braid, a, even bald is a hairstyle, because in, uh, in the olden days, or shall I say in, in antiquity, our ancestors would shave off their hair to mitigate all kinds of conditions, like you know, obviously for hygiene purposes, and then use their own hair to uh, create wigs and weaves and put the hair back onto the head. So we celebrate all types of hair uh, within our, um, our principle. So that it goes from bald, braids, afros, locks, coil curls, uh, weaves, wraps, even wraps is part of uh, part of the genre, and straight. Mm. Um, so the next question I'd like to ask you, um, a lot of uh, money is spent on hair, um, you know, the wigs, and the money is not actually going into the black community, even though we are spending a lot of money on the wig. A lot of the money is not going into our community. Um, so how how you think um, how could we um, solve this problem where the money can go back into our community as going to another culture community? How can we solve the problem? Um, you talked about the natural hair movement, and I really believe the natural hair movement is 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 a great um, conduit in terms of. Um, uh, owning the industry simply because, um, as we say in our brand, in our uh, 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 organization, we talk about collapsing the trust and collapsing the trust and reclaiming your trust. And until we own our own hair entirely, uh, that is ensuring that the well being of your hair is maintained using sustainable products to maintain our hair, we wouldn't have to rely on other people's uh, 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 hair type, mm -hmm. if you like, to, uh, to, to mitigate that problem. And so the, the natural movement to me is uh, indeed uh, a no brainer. It simply means that we will own our industry and perhaps we will own our own hair. Uh, it doesn't matter what the style, whether it's locked, whether it's kinked, whether it's a, 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 a twist out. I think that may be the solution that, that we, we've been looking for. That may be the answer to the problem. And, and also, if I just sort of support Derek's point there, Sharon, um, you, you also have to think about the consumer and the marketplace is a free market and um and of course consumers will buy um where they please it's, it's their choice and if um if they can get things a bit cheaper yeah so, so in a sense it's it, it's not really about blaming anybody but for the community itself to understand its own collective responsibility in terms of how we put it, making pro making products and providing services, then using those using those products and services, and then be part of the selling of those, you know, and, and be responsible for the selling and marketing of those products, and of course, and training the next generation because young people within the community need jobs, they need to be skilled up, as Derek said, the young people need somewhere. They need somewhere to go. They need something to do and someone to show them how. So in a sense, it's not really for us to blame any other community. And this is the conundrum the hair care industry faces as well, because as Derek alluded to, um, by now, by now, a lot of uh, you would have thought there'd be, there'd be more research and development to develop hair from, from African hair in terms of weaves and wigs and things like that and because that hasn't been done that leaves a market opportunity so on the one hand most of the hair that's making the the, the wigs and the weaves come from asian women that's just that's just a fact mm. so in a sense we we're always having to get our community to understand that they have we have to balance them balance this argument because you're, you're taking hair from Asian women, and it just so happens when it comes to trading, particularly in the UK, it's primarily Asian men who are selling Asian Asian men are selling Asian women's mm. hair to women of African descent, and women mm. of African descent are arguing with men, <laughs> Asian mm. men selling 
Asian women's hair. So do, do you see the conundrum? And this, yeah, and this, really. this is the community. And it's interesting you raise that now because increasingly, as Derek mentioned about the natural hair movement, but also, as you know, in wider society, there's this, this whole discussion about sustainability, supply chains, and, and do, do you realise, you know, where you're spending your money, what, what happens to the people who produce those goods? You know, we, we've had it with clothes. And, you know, it's interesting, there's a series running now called Coiled, where there's a young lady, Leanne Ali, who's actually looked into the whole ethics as it relates to as it relates to the hair and weave um, from from Asian women, so it, it's it, it's it's a it's a very it's very ethical and it's complex. And at the end of the day, you can't tell people what to do with their money. And if there's a gap in the market, there'll be entrepreneurs. Yeah, to meet that, and that's why the the natural movement has been really good because what it's brought is uh, the consumer now de demanding better quality pro products no no parabens no sulfates so that then is is good in terms of well-being so i i i would say that there's a a, um, a much greater awareness but it it, it takes time it certainly takes time if, if, if I may add to that, brother, is that the consumer is far more um, uh, informed and mm. I can't see why we did it 3,000, 5,000 years ago. We made wigs and weaves from our own hair. Our ancestors mm. did that from our own hair. Mm. And so as brother Rudy, Rudy just said, um, it's a market opportunity mm. for our young people moving forward. Uh, we can make our own wigs and weaves from our own hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my concern is like, um, I noticed that a lot of young people now, um, teenagers, are wearing wig, and it's like they don't want to wear their natural hair anymore. I mean, I suppose a lot of people said, "Oh, it's convenient for me to wear the wig. I just just cane roll my hair and put it on, and that's it. I'll go." But our, our inconvenient is making somebody else rich, another culture rich. Do you see my point? But, but it's a service that's being provided, though, isn't it? Yes. At the, at the end of the day, we, 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 can't, we can't blame the entrepreneur in the marketplace meet, meeting, meeting the need. So we, we go back to education and the long-term benefit of being able to take care of the hair. And that's why Derek's run so many um, uh, seminars around. There's three principles of um, expert information maintenance advice and professional insight to really help and educate people um, to, to be able to take care of their hair because it's not like the old days where you would sit down on your mother's knee or your grandmother's knee and they would plait the hair all evening, you know, three, four hours sitting there. Or, I mean, time, times have changed. So, so in a sense, we, we, we've just got to think of, we've got to be more creative Mm. in terms of education but I, I i would move away from the blame and it, it's not a, it's not a cultural deficit within the community it's 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 just a marketplace you know it's, it's a marketplace and, and also and if i may add sharon i mean we've come a long way uh, i as i said i grew up in the 1970s as a hairdresser and every other black woman would have had her hair relaxed and and that i mean nothing has changed because the relaxer then wasn't being created by us by our people. And it, it's, it's marvelous to see almost every other woman today wearing her hair naturally, including yourself, Sharon. Yeah, they yeah. wear their hair naturally. Think, think, well, think back to the curly perm in the 90s. No curly perm. Curly perms and relaxers, even the men. And some men had relaxed hair as well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, again, Derek said it all the time. It, it's a trend. It's a trend. We can go back 100 years and see what people were doing to their hair, particularly, you know, African Americans more than anywhere else on the planet. You know, the things that they did to straighten their hair. But also there's always been the business entrepreneurial side, Madam C. J. Walker. Yeah. Etc. And then of course in the nineteen eighties, those uh, American African American companies, they were, they were big companies. But um but the reality in this economic driven world that 
small market niche, small companies get bought up by big companies, you know. But uh, but we understand the emotional connection because because it's hair. And um, but ed education is the key for us. It's key, definitely, absolutely. The more we can educate people because people don't know what they don't know, do they? Yeah, it's about education. Mm. Um, anybody else got any questions? Um, I know it's an interview um, for for Derek. If anybody got a question, I've got a mail. I've got a couple of mail on there. I've got Keith. I've got Dean. Nice to see you, Dean. Um, we've got a question. We're talking about yeah. black hair. How we treat our hair as Afro Caribbean people. Any got any questions? I mean, I I just like to sort of um, agree with the um, speakers to a degree that it is actually about supply and demand, you know, and about entrepreneurship. And if there's a gap in the market and um, an opportunity arises, people are going to take it, you know. But I think there's something here also about um, if we understood a little bit more about our history in terms of actually the value of our hair, would we, I'm, I'm just putting this question out there, would we actually have a different perspective? Would we actually be, would we be actually talking more about it to our children and, and, and uh, our friends and relatives and families? Because I just, I don't, I don't hear discussions around hair. I don't hear discussions around the beauty of yeah. black hair and the value of the black hair. I mean, I mean, I just sort of heard from, uh, is it Rodi? Um, about, um, you know, we're buying hair from other cultures mm -hmm. and not valuing and not understanding how rich our hair is. Keith, Keith you make such a, a good point uh, and, and, the, and it's a balance point as well, because we have to balance because we're always saying to people that it's important that we uphold the the values of respect and inclusion that we want to impose on others because we expect us others to treat us that way and and it's and it's 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 very true so that's why we focus a lot on cultural esteem right we're doing a talk in a primary school tomorrow and that's our starting point it's a cultural esteem as, as Derek said thousands of years great hairstyles wigs weaves were made from African hair so it's just about research innovation and and um and the other important aspect to it as well we, we, we can go back 40 years in this country where um we had um Dyke and Dryden which I mentioned earlier on I worked for we were the largest provider of trade credit to Caribbean businesses we supplied hairdressing schools, retailers, wholesalers, all from within the community. There was a lot of training and development. And there was a sense of pride in terms of hair, fashion. So there was a link between hair, fashion, clothes, doing business, training youngsters. We had so many, we had so many hairdressing schools. And in fact, um, uh, there was a group of women. There was an organization called the Caribbean Afro Society of Hairdressers led by uh, Hyacinth ja Jarrett and Ginger Brown. And they actually wrote the curriculum for, for doing Afro hair and, and beauty as well, that um, was used as the curriculum in, in the further education colleges. This is 40 years ago. Mm. So, so in that sense, that in answer to your question, um, our hair and the culture and the esteem to go with it and the economic value of it 40 years ago it, it was high up on the high up on the agenda but you know times change generations change but it's that's why i think and derek and myself are quite happy when young people come to us in this age you know they're doing podcasts and things like that and actually ask about the past you know and what happened and how did you do things in the past right rather than feel that they can somehow they've arrived and they, they've got the newest ideas and, and they can reinvent the wheel that they've never seen, you know? So I think there is a saying, if, if, you, if you don't know where you're coming from, mm. you really don't know where you're actually going. And I, I just feel that there's an erosion of our, our blackness in general, 
but also I think Sharon says something about you know sort of teenagers and and this whole thing around being like um, being connected to a different group um, as opposed to actually valuing self and what we as individuals or as black people yeah. actually bring to the table. What, what, what I would say though, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't burden people of African descent only with that because we, we live in a culture where, you know, um, that is very much driven by lots of trends and fashions. <clears throat> but I, I think, and what we tend to do is, is focus on the part of the culture that says we want to learn, we want to understand. As I said, Derek runs so many sessions just on helping women to giving them the maintenance advice that they need. You've got still got thousands of women transitioning from using chemicals in their hair back to natural. Mm. So it's, it's a quiet trend and it's not something that you will see necessarily and will be talked about. And then I, I guess your next point in terms of the the generations, the cultural communication, as we call it. Um, and that's why you'll see, I think, increasingly that there are better family days. And, and there, there is a, a small core of younger people who are conscious about their hair. But I think they've got they've they've had to go through this journey. So we always talk about women going through a journey because they have to go back and unlearn some of the things that were driven into their minds you know the television the, yeah you know, all that we all that media that drives a certain look and feel into your mind and, and when you do become conscious you have to unlearn that and that and that and that's quite quite a journey but the fact that the um this large movement to back to natural some of it's generational as well um does in in a sense give us some hope that uh, the, the culture, you know, uh, does realise that um, the the esteem in which you hold yourself is, is important. But um, yeah, you know. Thank you for that. Um, they've got a couple of questions. Um, I just like to ask. Um, um, question in the chat: Why does black hair take a long time to grow? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a long time to grow. Have you seen the length of some of the Rastafarian? <laughs> uh, yeah. I've I've always wondered when people said that when I've seen some of those guys and 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 yeah. hair right down to the ground. Yeah. Anyway, brother Derek's an expert on that one. I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, you know, I I began I began by I began by um um saying that reciting Revelations 2 verses 9. Mm. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And if I could go back to Keith's um, explanation with regards to history and heritage and legacy. Um, and at the same time, I add, I'll add uh, to Sharon's answer, why does black hair take so long? Now, it depends on the reference point in which you are referring, obviously, we know that there are, there's trauma in our community. We know that there's lack of representation on our television screen. Yeah. Uh, we know that lots of young black children have been looking at the wrong imageries. So there's a lot of magic, sorcery and witchcraft in the, being played out on their minds there on a daily basis. So now they're, they're, they're looking at somebody else's hair and making uh, the reference that their, their, their hair should be like that. Now, Afro hair does grow and grows quite profusely. Um, but what's interesting, it was the other side that misappropriated our culture in the first place. Now, if you think of hairstyling, style aesthetics, mm. you go back almost 7,000 years. The very first tool that was created to maintain our hair was this. This Afro comb dates back almost 7,000 years. <laughs> no other tool was, was around. Yeah. Um, the, famous, the famous bob that other nations and other cultures has misappropriated, began with black people. It was indeed Africans who created the bob. We know that we've seen the bobs worn in Monroe and Annie Winter and uh, famous people like Mary Quant, they wore the bob. But when we wear the bob, people, our people still think that we're trying to copy somebody else. Yet mm. the, bob, the bob was created by our ancestors. 
If you think of Egypt or, or Kush, or um, you, you think of almost 4,000 years of dynasty yeah, with the most marvelous hairstyles, the most amazing hairstyles and hairdressers <laughs> were doing works at a time when our, our neighbors in Europe were practically non-existent. Um, so as Keith said, it's all about education, understanding yeah. your culture. We've had a history, a marvelous history. The conditioner that we all see every day in supermarkets and, 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 and um, beauty supply stores was created by a black woman. That's Madam C.J. Walker. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's incumbent upon us, therefore, parents and, and teachers, to educate our young people and educate ourselves. Yeah. Because the history of Afro hair is phenomenal. Yeah. And Afro hair is indeed a wonderful dome that doesn't want to grow down. It grows upwards, as we all say. It grows defies <laughs> gravity to the sky. Why should it grow long? It's trying to go up to worship the creator. Amen. So Amen. We, should, we should understand. First of all, we should not make any comparisons. Exactly. In our company, we talk about going about our business, minding our own, minding business. Our own business. We don't look at other people's hair type because other people's hair type are looking at us. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we have to start celebrating us and being us as opposed to making comparisons. Your hair grows. Every hair type and every hair texture is the same. All hair types has three things. Uh, a, a, a follicle. It has uh, where the hair grows out of the follicle, right? Whether your hair is Caucasian, Asian, or, 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 or African, it has a follicle. It grows out of the follicle. Every hair strand has a ecosystem below the hair strand. The hair this, in this ecosystem provides nourishment and moisture for the hair to grow. But obviously we are looking at other people's culture. We are being traumatized by their culture and we want our hair to be like them. Mm. All hair type is the same. So mm. brother Let's Dean focus on our hand. hair. <laughs> brother Dean, and, you put your hand up, you're on mute. That's it. Yeah. You know, it, good good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here. I tell you, I have to get a, a, a London watch, you know, because I'm working with three times. I need a Jamaican watch and I need a London watch and I'm in the US. So it's a pleasure for me to be here this afternoon. And um, I was trying to get the, one of my best ear style to be on my backdrop, you know, coming on this special show. I feel so honored. Um, just to refer to your question, that, that ear style about how ear grows. In those days, I would wear, that's me and the Jamaican ambassador and um, in, in, and the Jamaican embassy. And that was what they call a flat top. And that's what Derek say. I would wear my flat top. In Jamaica, I was a barber. So I would try to be different when people are wearing what you call, your front is low and the back is high. I would do the flat top. And I would have my pencil stick it in my ear. And that makes a difference. And to, add to what Derek said about the ear, you know, if you notice the style of beard, you know, I never knew black men or our black men could have such tall beard. So we grow over here, you know, sometimes I see my friend and I'm like, you know, I could, I could not believe that their ear could be, you know, like Derek. I never knew Derek could grow his ear so, so tall. So if we want our ear to go tall, we can fit it whatever, you know, style we can get, you know. That's different with us. We can work with all styles. With Afro, we can make that here and tomorrow it's up there. With dreadlocks, we can be there. So it's an honor, you know. Thank, thank, thank you for that, Dean. And that's so true. Um, there's a couple of points from Pauline, uh, Derek, for you. It's... Um, there's a point around some wigs costing a hundred pounds mm -hmm. and which do not last. And of course that that's another point in terms of quality. And, um, but also there's another point should, should women wear the bald hairstyles? Why not? I mean, bald hair, bald hairstyles is a fashion. Um, and it's interesting. I think it, it looks quite nice. It's quite, it's quite becoming. Um, I say this because, I'd rather see a woman um, 
whose hair has been traumatized by stress or maybe chemical damage or attraction alopecia. Or, 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 mm -hmm. I, I'd much rather see that hair uh, whistle down completely rather than having patches and bumps in her hair. Uh, and, and for instance, if she was about to wear uh, something to, to prevent that, like a wig, as they say, it just gets worse. Um, I, I mean, obviously, it's, 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 it's quite a feat to shave your hair off, but I've seen it been done, it's, it's, it's quite attractive. But back to the, the point of hair growth. Um, hair grows, all hair type grows. Obviously, some, others, some hair grows more than others. But I think it's also understanding uh, what we must do to uh, assist the hair and to nourish your hair. Uh, lots of women don't realize that hair needs three fundamental things to help it grow successfully. And sometimes um, most women don't understand what they need to, 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 to assist. Uh, hair also needs nutrient. Uh, it's important that your hair must receive nutrient on the inside because hair grows at a cellular level. It's not what you put on the outside. It's what you put on the inside. So it's important to ensure that your hair receives all the nutrients. Your hair is made up of chunks, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and so on. So you have, to, you have to consume the minerals and you have to consume the vitamins. Hair growth is also uh, holistic. You have to be good with yourself. You've got to be healthy, physically healthy, mentally healthy, physiologically. And so if you're not all of these things, then your hair will suffer growth. But if you're in a good place and you're using the right products, that have the nutrients in them, the moisturization, the hydration, your hair will grow successfully. And I think it might be helpful for you to explain how the hair is the last to get the benefits because the body takes part, takes care of other parts of the body and the hair's last. In terms uh, of very, very, very good point. Uh, what most people don't realize is that if you are not well, and we're living in really draconian times, very difficult times. If you're not well and you are challenged or your immune system is challenged, what you will find, all the nutrients you consume will go towards healing other parts of the body. The hair is the last, the hair cells are the last thing, as if the body doesn't care because your hair isn't important, your hair sharp isn't important. It's not, important, it's not as important as your, as your liver or your lungs or your heart. So if you're not well, your body would rob all the nutrients go into your hair and provide it to your cells or other parts of your body to ensure that you're, that, that, that you're healthy. So hair growth is really much more than just applying things externally. It's about you being in a good place and you being very, very healthy. Okay. You, you got a thumbs up from, from Pauline on that one. Uh, I'd like to ask another question. Um, how often should... Um, Africa hair being washed. How should we, how often should we wash our hair? Um, washing or shampooing, as we say, is important. It is important to shampoo your hair. Again, as I said, uh, the hair has its own ecosystem. It provides for it all the nutrients it needs. But because we work in the, in the environment where there are lots of pollutants, um, our hair, you know, we attract dirt and debris to the hair and to the scalp. So it's important to maintain hygiene and shampoo our hair quite frequently. What we have. What we must bear in mind, shampoos are very dodgy. If you're not using the correct shampoos, in other words, shampoos that are made with parabens and sulfates and other nefarious chemicals, it can have a profound effect on your hair. And, and in, in the long term, it inhibits growth and invariably it breaks your hair off and makes your hair very, very dry. And that's what I like about the natural movement. The level of education in our community now is so amazing that the sisters are looking more and more for education and empowerment. Okay, so what's important, if you are going to shampoo your hair frequently, we suggest that you shampoo your hair with a co-wash. Co-washes are shampoos that doesn't lather, but you have to disassociate yourself with shampoos that lather because what the lather, the lather has a dangerous chemical in it that creates the lather. The lather makes you feel good. That feel good yeah. factor is what's causing the problem because that, to get that feel good factor, you have to add sulfates and parabens. And sulfates and parabens can be carcinogenic and invariably will damage your hair. So what we do in our company, we, uh, we created something called co-wash. What the co-wash does, you can shampoo your hair as many times as possible with a co-wash 
because it doesn't lather, it cleanses the hair, it provides moisture, hydration, and nutrient. That's the three fundamental things you need for hair growth. That's why the natural movement is a wonderful thing because all the systems are do now doing is moisturizing, hydrating, and creating and, and providing nutrients to the hair. So, shampoo. So where do you get your products from? I mean, are, you know the products behind you. Are they your own products? We are. Uh, we manufacture our own products. We created our own products. It is a direct climate uh, uh, hair care system. It's a system because since we are moving into a new time and new era, we recognize that the systems have suffered in the past. They're now engaging themselves with the natural hair movement. In other words, they've collapsed the trust. The trust was trusting chemicals to uh, somehow, uh, uh, you know, I mean, mitigate the, the insecurity that they had before. But today, they've they've shelved that. They got rid of the, the, the relaxers and in many cases the weaves. And so we created a system. The system simply means that there are three tears. It's important to shampoo, it's more important to co-wash, and it's crucially important to condition. Once you've done that, that's one tear, there's another tear. That tear is all about feeding, moisturizing, hydrating, and creating nutrients in the hair. There's a, there's a third tear that's important. That's we got this from our ancestors, our mothers, and our aunts back in the day that used to grease our scalp. We don't say the word grease anymore, we say feed. So we feed your scalp with what we call either hemp, which is a marvelous food, it's antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-carcinogenic. That's from Jamaica, that's shea butter and vitamins. It's a beautiful conditioner made for, by us, for us. It's our product. There's another wonderful food, it's called hair, 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 hair and scalp food. Again, black Jamaican or base. We believe in using plant-based ingredients yeah. simply because it's sustainable. It's from our countries of origin. Our ancestors said to us, we must only use ingredients that's indigenous to us. So we go back to nature, we go back to our countries, Africa, we go to Ghana, we go to Zimbabwe, we go to Nigeria, we go to Jamaica, we go to Grenada, and we find the products to use on our hair for our people. So that's the three tears and they are absolutely crucial for our hair growth. Wow. Very informative. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very informative. Well, it's important, Sharon, because look, um, your hair is your beauty. It's the first thing you yes, see. Uh, our, our hair is indeed, um, has gone through decades of all kinds of trauma, all kinds of fear. There's a wonderful term today that, uh, it's not a wonderful term, but it's a term that's very, has been kicking around. It's called Afrophobia. That says a lot to me. It means that people are scared of our hair because once we wear our hair, uh, it is seen as re re you know rebellious. Think of the the, the 70s when Afro hair was politicized by people like Angela Davis. The hair somehow gives you empowerment. And so that's what's nice about the natural movement. When you see the young girls today, you see this, this dome. Uh, sometimes it's on unkept, but that doesn't mean it's, it's untidy. It's, it's allowed to be itself. And so our hair, we refer to that as Aphrodite. It's a wonderful thing when you see natural hair, it's all this glory, right? Our aunts, our aunts and grandmothers used to pat it back in the day. All right, so mm -hmm. it's important to ensure that we care for our hair because it's the only thing that gives us that sort of empowerment. I mean, my hair, there's no more hair anymore because of course that's age and genetics. But as you can <laughs> see, my beard, my beard makes up for my hair because, and I use, I use my products on my beard. We have a product range for men. It's called K77. It's the same principle. It's about caring, nourishing, moisturizing, and hydrating, looking after yourself. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe, Sharon, the next few minutes, we could probably talk about the young people and that, that knowledge transfer, which yeah. is generational. Because I, I think the, our community is still trying to find ways to to do that more effectively because you know we still have mothers we still have grandmothers we still have young people who, who do need to to do need to understand about their hair and we get back to the cultural esteem so we we've we've weaved we've weaved all this with uh knowledge about self and hair and cultural esteem mm. and, and like excellence yeah and it, and it's about absolutely about excellence performance excellence in whatever they're doing in this kind of thing whatever part of life they're in it is about excellence so so i i, I guess um 
we're all still looking for more innovative ways for this learning to be shared to young people. Well, I mean, Brother Rosie, really to look at, I'm, 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 I'm encouraged me, there are, there are really wonderful images that we see on mainstream TV. I was amazed to see yeah. the Bond girl, uh, um, yes. Leticia Lynch from Shepherd's Bush, Jamaican origin. Yeah. I mean, to me, that spells volume when you see the, the protagonist, the main woman on the TV. After all of these years, I've been watching Bond. There was never, of course, we had we had Grace Jones back Grace in the day. Jones, yeah. with that gorgeous yeah. hairstyle has become yeah. iconic Very right now. Cool. So to see Letitia Lynch wearing a short afro for the mm -hmm. first time, that would really empower and give our young girls a sense of, you know, sense of self and sense of self-loving as opposed to self self-loathing or self-hating. So things are changing, Sharon, okay? For instance, um, we've had Bridgerton quite recently. We've had Black Panther where the sister removed the wig and threw the wig into the <laughs> I've seen that one. That to me, yes, is a, to me that's, that's remarkable. So what we're now seeing is a, look, it's, it's all about being, a, we are awoken. The key thing now is to stay awake. That's what's fundamentally important, yeah. okay? And what we're now seeing, I think, it's, it's a marvelous day for us. I think I am absolutely fascinated that, um, so we shouldn't waste time grinding axes about who they are, what they're doing. It's what we are doing for our community, yeah. how yeah. we are representing them by being ourselves. Yeah. Like, I, yes. I, I love to see the sisters with the natural hair and the natural hair movement as a hairdresser is enormous. It's enormous. I mean, it's amazing it's, because it's, enormous. Um, it's only about, I think it's about six weeks ago, um, I decided to just shave off my hair. Um, um, I just, you know, I was thinking about it. What should I do? I'll shave it off. And um, I feel quite happy um, with my hair like this. And um, I get so nice. much compliments yeah, no, it looks uh, nice. with my hair. It's very and striking. You're very striking. Yeah, it's very Sharon, striking. Sharon, and, Sharon, um, I get so much compliments. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. Even before, when I, because I usually just pat it down, but because I've I've dyed it and, and I cut it down short, I get so much compliment. And I was thinking, the question I want to ask, you know, if people are wearing wig mm. and, and it's sewing on, I mean, how your your hair gets so hot? I mean, I've been wearing wig for about over for about twenty years. I don't wear wig, but what is no. it? The heat, heat in your hair? It must be a certain temperature. How does that work? Sharon, you let's stop <laughs> trying to split hairs, trying to work out. What, forget about look. Doesn't it's matter. taking you. It's taking you over twenty or thirty. Yeah, years. yeah, very long time. Yeah. So, so, so. so Give the sisters an opportunity, give them a chance. It's not easy, it's not an it's easy journey. thing. I, mean, I remember when I was going bald back in the day, I remember I was going bald and I still yeah. tried really hard exactly. to pretend <laughs> my hair was there and it was, it was bald. And I remember <laughs> watching myself on TV and I thought to myself, Derek, you're bald. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to my barber there and then, yeah. I went back to my shop, I had 20 barbers working for me. I said to my barber, just shave the bloody thing off. So <laughs> give the sister an opportunity, give them a chance. They will get there eventually, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to remember, I mean, if you look at the collective at the moment, I'm, every other sister wears the hair natural, but it doesn't matter. We talk about the nine principles of Afro hair. Black women have a fundamental right to, 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 to celebrate all aspects of Afro hair and the genres, right? Whether it's a ball style, we see that, whether it's a little kinky afro, whether it's a coily afro, whether it's a, a, a twist out, whether it's a weave, or just uh, uh, just uh, uh, um, the, the the rap, the rap mm -hmm. is also a style. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? We look beautiful anyway, so let's not split hairs. It looks <laughs> like they have a beef with sisters and wigs and weave. <laughs> As I said to you before, Sharon, we created the wigs and the weave. Why do we think? Other people wear the wigs and the weave. We've been wearing, you know, the, you know the wig that the that the judge wear. That came out of Egypt, right? <laughs> and you have to remember, for generations, those British royalty wore wigs and weaves. Right. Yeah, you know, for, for, for generations. Eighteenth century. They had issues with the head. They, had, they were bald. They were going bald based on all kinds of dirt and <laughs> whatever. So give the sisters an opportunity. Some of them will get there eventually, but um, nothing wrong with a wig or a weave. I think wigs and wigs are quite fascinating. It's an accessory. Yeah. 
Again, mm. consumer choice, isn't it? It's a good it choice. Absolutely. Is there a more question, uh, Mr. Page? Well, we, let me just check because we're... Just do, on, just do one more, two more questions and we could just run, um, you know... Yeah, because we three minutes. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. No, no, nothing. Why are we doing? Okay, let me first say that Afro hair, back to Keith's earlier points about the celebration of the history yeah. of Afro hair. We've had some of the greatest giants on the planet who have done hairdressing from Malam C.G. Walker back, as, as I keep saying, back from, the, from antiquity right up to Pierre, Pierre Toussaint, who was a famous uh, black man who did hairdressing uh, for kings and queens in, uh, during slavery. Uh, all right, we've had some of the greatest hairdressers uh, up to Winston Isaacs, uh, Carmen England, um, Cynthia Jarrett. We've had people like Joan Sarms, uh, Cynthia Mitchell and Shepherds Bush, um, uh, great name like Jenny Cooper. These are giants of legends of the industry. Enoch Williams in, 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 in Brixton. And uh, they, Mi Amigos, Mr. They're Norman. They're all great Mr. educators. Marsden. They're all right. great and, educators. And they've been well. caring for the for yeah. educators yeah. for centuries. <laughs> so yeah. we, we must celebrate these people, our people, our legends, our pioneers and our veterans. Yeah, absolutely. So on that positive note, Sharon. Okay. Um, um, I think, has anyone got any question before we just um, end the session? Or well, everything's been covered? I, I could say quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, okay. What I noticed with your style, it recycle. You know, the style that is here now, that was, you know, it comes back. There's nothing new. There's nothing you new. You cannot create anything you know, new. Yeah, so I know, you know, we used, to wear, we used to wear the, 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 the Chinese bombs and they're coming back. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Don't go, nothing goes out of style. Because, you know, That's as a barber in Jamaica, I could remember I leave Jamaica to come to the United States to do a program. And three months after, I tripped my hair grew up and I went to the barber shop and said, give me the latest style for the US. <laughs> I was going back to Jamaica to, and when I went there, that was like, a, oh, it was, everybody in Jamaica was wearing the same style. So, you know, nothing changes with your style. It recycles. <laughs> but, um, just, but Sean, before I go, for, uh, for, for those viewers and, 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 and members of the panel, if you are interested in the product range, do let me know. It's a, com it's a complete system for both men and women. It's, it's important to remember that your hair needs moisture, hydration, and nutrient. And you just go to www.hairx.uk and everything's on that site. Hairx, you, you put it in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Put it in the chat, so it's in, in the chat. And the information. And okay, Derek, I just... Derek's all over social media. I'll just put Derek's Yeah, it's all over social media. <laughs> Every <laughs> minute. I don't know how you got time, <laughs> Derek. <laughs> you could never not find him. Yes, Sharon. <laughs> Always oh, fine. Um, just like to thank our speakers um, coming on tonight. It was a um, very informative um, session, and I hope um, we gained some knowledge from um, the speakers tonight. Because, as um, Marvis Garver said, "Up, up, your mighty race. We can accomplish what we will. Be what we can accomplish. Now we are accomplished as Afro Caribbean, and it's, and it's about going forward." and uh, meeting the needs of um, our younger generation, because you know we need to teach the younger generation. When I, because I'm a school teacher, when I see some children um, like um, six and five having wigs and, and in their hair, and I said, Lord, mm -hmm. it's not right. Their hair is all tight up. And I said, Lord, no. So it's so important that you, know, you go into school and to educate our, our young generation and that they can be proud of who they are because you know we're wonderfully and marvelously made by God and the God that I serve the God that we serve we don't make no mistake and God knows that you know the number how many hairs we got on our head that's the God we serve and God make us a peculiar people we stand out our hair is so flexible you know when I saw this this lady she have a, a, a hanger I'm not sure this woman with the hanger <laughs> she got so much different style, a tree, uh, you know, I hope she's seen the picture, but it's amazing, the flexibility of our hair, and God is so good to us, so let's just embrace our hair and um, do what we will, and this is um, end with a prayer.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for another day, oh God, that you have spared our life. We want to thank you, oh God, that you are God above all God, and that, Lord, we are wonderfully and marvelously made by you. Lord, there you have made no mistakes. Hallelujah. Lord, you know the hair on our head. You know all about us. And I pray, oh God, that you, we would just help the next generation to move forward and to be a proud of themselves and to be who, God, you make them to be in your name. I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, guys, for coming on. I mean, I just want to say thanks, guys, for that journey. Um, definitely um, um, inspirational. And it, and it gives us gives us a, a, um, a, a slightly different perspective. And there's certain things there that I wasn't aware of. So thanks very much again. Thank you very much, Keith. And as Marcus Garvey said, it's not just about not unraveling the kinks in your hair, but the kinks in your mind. <laughs> Amen. 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 No, good night, all. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. Very much. Thank thank you. you. Uh, we'll definitely do part Bye. two, Sharon. Yes. I'll touch base with you soon, sir.